What is up guys? Welcome back to my channel. I have had a very eventful last three months. I was on my second travel nurse assignment. It was wild. I will have to make an entirely different video about that contract and just about how it all went down. But today we're moving on to the next and I am on my third travel nurse assignment and I'm so excited to share this journey with you guys. I have orientation this week. And so what I figured I would do is take you guys along my orientation week with me. They're gonna be taking me through an entire week of training and I'm just excited that I even get an orientation at all. My first assignment, I had one day of orientation where I followed around a nurse and then I was on my own. My second travel nurse assignment, same story. So the fact that this assignment, I actually get an entire week is really exciting. So I figured I'd share whatever information I can with you guys so you can have a better understanding of if travel nursing is something that you wanna do or if it's something you definitely know you don't wanna do. Every experience has been completely different and I just can't wait to see what is in store. So the day before travel nurse assignment, typically what I do is I wait to get the email. The email is what they send out about a week or a couple days before your assignment starts and it gives you all the details. It tells you where you need to be, what time you need to be there, and what you need to bring. Typically in the past for me, it's been your first day on the floor. This job is different because I actually get an orientation. So the first day is going to be at a different location and they're going to be requiring me to perform a bunch of tasks in front of them that I need to be tested out on essentially, deciding whether or not I'm competent enough for the position. So on that email at the bottom, there are all of these videos that I need to watch on various things. A Foley catheter insertion and a central line dressing chain. I need to show them that I can do those procedures using sterile technique and not breaking it, which is good because it shows that they actually want to make sure that their nurses are competent and they're setting a standard, which again is a foreign idea. So the first day what I'll do is go over that email, make sure I know exactly how far away the facility is so I know what time I need to get up, make sure I read everything over so that if there's anything different in the way that they're requiring me to do these tasks, if they have different protocols or anything that I'll be aware of it, and what my day is gonna be like. So I noticed it said that I have to wear navy scrubs, that seems to be kind of a standard for what Arizona sets for their nurses. And that's because a lot of the hospitals here prefer that each department has their own color scrub. So you already know when they're walking over to you who they are. And for nurses, it's Navy. So my last assignment, thankfully, I already got that handled and I got some Navy scrubs, so I should be set to go. So aside from what they're going to be testing me on on that first day, before you even start your assignment, most of the time they have you fill out all of these tests before you even start. So I had competency exams that were on medication, math, EKG interpretation, and they kind of make it customized to whatever your specialty is. So if you work in labor and delivery, I'm sure those exams are gonna be on mom and baby things. If you work in peds, I'm sure it's gonna be a med math exam on peds. For me, it was an EKG interpretation exam because I work in PCU and telemetry. So I already completed those and now anything moving forward is going to be specifically required from the facility. And anything I completed prior to that is usually what your travel agency requires of you. So there's kind of like twofold. You have to complete what the travel agency requires you to do. And then once you start your job, you do whatever the job requires you to do. So I'll get the show on the road and stop talking so you guys can kind of see. I don't think I'll be able to take, unfortunately, too many videos during the actual orientation itself but I'll try to do my best to kind of give you guys glimpses of what my day is like and we'll kind of just go from there and now I'm just gonna prepare for my week by getting all my meals ready and cleaning up my place and getting all my ducks in a row or is it a line I don't know either way I'm getting myself set up for the week So I'm going to put away all my dishes. I have plenty of them, as you can see. I'm not actually sure if I need to even meal prep because my first four days, I'm not even actually in the hospital, but I'd rather just be safe. So I'm gonna make sure I have some salads prepared and maybe some like overnight oats, nothing crazy. Something that I'm really excited about is my basil. How do I show you? This little garden that I got for Christmas, my boyfriend got it for me. 
and my little baby basils are thriving. Look at them, they're so cute. It's like a smart garden, it's called Click and Grow. And every time I come into my kitchen, it makes me super happy. I see them like sprouting and growing new leaves and it just brings me so much joy. So as you see, I have a ton of dishes I have to put away. I have my whole setup with my cute little basil and then also the amazing rice. I've been watching on Paramount Plus and then of course popcorn, that's really good. And let's get to it. So I didn't have time to film before because I was running a little behind and I didn't get a chance to do a trial run. So I wanted to make sure that I got there on time. Right when I got there, it was a simulation lab. Like it was a better setup than even my nursing school was. It was an entire hospital room with everything, a mannequin and all the proper equipment that you need to do a Foley catheter insertion and a central line dressing change. And it was a little intimidating at first just because both of them were kits that I really hadn't seen. And um, I ended up passing both of them on the first try, thank God. Um, and they video record you outside the room and then don't tell you until you're finished um, if you passed or not. So it's just funny because you're going through this simulation and you have no idea how you're doing until the very end. But thankfully I did okay. Then they sent me over now to a completely different hospital where I believe we're going to be doing more orientation not exactly sure what that entails, but um, just got here, so we'll see. So I just finished my orientation day one and I went to the second facility that they had us meet at and we basically just sat in a room and did modules the entire time for like six and a half hours. So it was a really long time. It was a lot of modules and usually you could just do them at home, but it was like you just had to sit there in front of a computer and just do module over module over module. And there were so many quizzes on traumatic brain injuries and strokes and if there's a violent or aggressive patient or um, all of the basic things that they have you do. The whole normal orientation that you do for every hospital. And now my brain is like completely mush and I'm ready to be home and just eat my salad and relax. Tomorrow it looks like our orientation is gonna be more skills based so curious to see what that'll be but my first day went well i'm glad that i passed everything and that i'm finished with all of the testing because it was so much testing <laughs> it's looking like it'll be a better assignment and i'm not gonna get my hopes up but i am staying positive it's okay it's okay <laughs> Good morning. I just got here for my second day and I'm not exactly sure what we'll be doing. It looks like some patient care type of activities, um, but I'll keep you guys updated and we'll see what second day has to offer. So 
I just finished day two of my orientation for this travel assignment. Maya's being so weird. Look at this. What are you doing? Can you not? <laughs> what a weird dog. As I was saying, just finished my second day and we went over how to do restraints. We went over all the different codes in the hospital, the basics, the values of the hospital, things like that. And, but uh, other than that, I believe I'm just waiting for an email to be told when I'll actually start on the floor for my real orientation on the unit. And I'm excited for that just to actually see what it's gonna be like, who I'll be working with and things like that. Good morning guys. Today's day four of my orientation, which basically concludes everything up until the day that I start working on the floor. Yesterday, I was supposed to go in for a Cerner training, but I've already used Cerner before, so I opted out of that orientation day. And today, I just go in, I believe for like an hour, just to meet the manager of the unit and to get a little tour of the place that I'll be working. I'm pretty excited just to meet everyone, see what the hospital looks like, and just get a better idea of what I'm gonna be walking into. I just pulled up at Starbucks. I am going to be going over some of the things that I need to research and read for. Tonight I have a Bible study. I just joined this group. It meets every Thursday night, and I'm pretty excited about it. We're going over the book of James, so I'm just gonna start reading and just diving in a little bit deeper so that I can really contribute to the conversation and know what I'm talking about. So yeah, I'm looking forward to that then I will go to the hospital and then straight from there I'll go to my Bible study and that kind of completes my orientation week it seems to be a pretty good start to this new job and can't wait to tell you guys more about it as I learn and as staff you're kind of like but being there it was incredible it was like that tour was amazing I can't even tell you, I haven't worked at this nice of a hospital ever. They had a Starbucks inside the hospital, which is dangerous, but also amazing. And I also haven't worked at a hospital that has all of this equipment and proper staffing. And I just was walking around turning corners like, Ooh, this is nice. Girl, this audit is you right here? Okay. They don't smell like roaches in here or nothing. I mean, it's just definitely a nice facility and I'm excited. I was hesitant to be excited just because I didn't want to get let down, but I'm fully going ahead and just saying it's okay for me to be excited. This is going to be a better chapter for me and it is going to feel much safer because they definitely have regulations and protocols and people there to help you. That's not to say that things aren't going to happen and that days won't be rough. But based on the previous experiences that I've had with traveling, just having this tour of the hospital has given me so much peace. I'm so excited and I can't wait to share more with you guys about how this is going to go. I definitely feel like this is a season that God is intentionally putting me in to forget all of what's old and just embrace what's new. And I know that in the past I've allowed my past experiences to weigh down the current situation or the potential for the future because I'm worried. And I know recently I have been doing that with traveling and I really need to change my mindset about that. I kind of need to think about it like when you're golfing. My boyfriend tells me this all the time when we go. Oh no, what does he say? Every hole is a new hole or like you need to leave the last hole. Essentially along the lines of don't let it impact your next play. And that's what I need to do with travel nursing is put what I've learned in the past, take it, grow from it, but don't allow it to affect your next opportunity. Isaiah 43, 18 says, remember not the former things, nor consider the things of old. Behold, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs forth. Do you not perceive it? I will make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. Why are we looking back? Whether it was something good, whether it was something bad, he's encouraging people, regardless of the past, to put it in the past and to embrace the new. And this does seem scary and unfamiliar, but God wants us to open up our eyes and to see that he's sovereign and to trust in him. And another verse that applies to this is Deuteronomy 31, eight. It is the Lord who goes before you. He will be with you. He will not leave you or forsake you. Do not fear or be dismayed. I hope you guys find encouragement in that like I did. And that if you're stepping out into something new or unfamiliar, that you just take that step of faith and decide to be bold in it. 
So that concludes my orientation week. And I just want to say thank you guys for watching. If you made it this far, please like this video as well as comment. Let me know what it is that you guys are doing. If you guys are travel nurses, if you're looking to become a nurse or really if there's any questions that you guys have for me, I love seeing comments and just getting to know you guys personally. And if you haven't already also subscribe to this channel, please, because I'm so excited to start sharing more content with you guys. So stay tuned for more videos. Remember that nothing that you guys go through, you're going through alone. Thank you.